Hi, I'm Thesia Ellis, and welcome to this Grandma's Life podcast. This is going to be a special episode that I'm doing. It is episode number 54, and it is called How Did I Do in 2023? Because this is a special episode, I'm not going to do any like uh, quotes and history and scripture or anything like that. I'm just going to get down to brass tacks and talk about uh, what I usually, what I do every year is I make up goals for the year. And then at the end of the year, and I know it's February 1st, 2024, and I'm just now getting this out. And it's going to be even worse because for my, uh, this, for uh, grandma's homestead, I'm going to take this recording and do some editing with it and post it on my YouTube channel at the same time too for uh, grandma's homestead. So it's going to come out even later. But if you look back at the history, it seems like whenever I was researching this, when I was researching what I do for goals for 2023, it was in February when I had put that out. So I guess in my timeline, it's right on time. <laughs> I don't know. So, um, like I said, at the beginning of each year or thereabouts, I set goals for specific things that I want to do for the year. And, and I guess they're pie in the sky. I don't know. There's so many things I want to get done and, and I struggle with, not only the things I want to get done, but the realizing that I am in my 60s and I don't know how much more time I'm going to be able to have to do that anyway. And there's a lot of things to balance out. I mean, tomorrow's not guaranteed, you know, so I don't know. So it, it is a mind game and, and uh, uh, apparently I play a lot. But um, first of all, let's talk about the farm. My, I had wanted in 2023 to expand my chicken and duck flock. I wanted to be able to have more eggs to sell to some customers. I was getting some customers and was able to service them pretty good. <clears throat> and uh, I had bought chicks, I believe, for laying hen, uh, for layers. And um, we had a particularly hot day and, and they were in the shade. But I went out there one time and looked at them and they, every one of them were dead. And so then I waited a little bit, and then another set, and I can't remember. And then that may be in the the that may be in the second set. The first set was earlier in the year, and even with the heat lamp, and hey, we had a cold snap, and I lost all of my chicks to cold. So I had two different batches of chicks that I had actually bought, and I had and I had also had hatched some, and I have a few that have survived, but as a general rule they didn't they didn't do well and by the time that i was getting things done uh, or get as they were aging i had both hawk and owl pressure that took out several of my chicks and several of my ducks and they were taking out my adult ducks that were just a, well they i say they were adult they were several of them were laying and some of them were just about to the age to lay so i had some pretty significant losses in in my bird flock this year so i believe i have approximately the same number of birds that i had when i started the year so i did not expand them and i'm i have to admit i'm kind of bummed about that my idaho pasture pigs i had noticed that last year i had said that oscar was my breeding boar he was gimpy and i didn't know what the deal was with him well <clears throat> that turned into a big old long drawn out thing too. This was, like I said, he was my breeding boar. <clears throat> and the best they could tell after I had been called to vet and after I had uh, had a chiropractor come out to adjust him, they think what he did when he was, when he was uh, mating with my girls, he fell off and hurt his back. And over time, he just got worse and worse and worse. And we ended up having to take him to the processor and, and because he was a boar and because he was under such distress, because by the time we took him to the processor, his hind legs were not working at all. And it was a real challenge to get him loaded up to take to the processor, which is very stressful. And that hurts the meat, uh, how good the meat can taste also. So we didn't know if we were going to have a really expensive dog food, you know, because it was going to have boar taint and stress, you know, and all that other stuff. And so we got most of it. We got some bacon. And uh, we also got the uh, pork jowls, you know, done up like bacon and um, pork chops and the rest of it was ground. And and 
Oh, well, and half of the ground was uh, breakfast sausage. And it actually ended up tasting really good. So uh, that was a good thing. We didn't have to feed all that to the dogs. And I'm grateful for that, too. But that was my that was my second boar. My first one died in the heat the, the summer before that. And then this one hurts himself. And so now I've got, I still got the two sows. Uh, okay, so now let me tell you about this one, too. Um, also Daisy uh, showed signs of pregnancy so we got her set up and that was a that was like three or four days of just terrible terrible she went into labor and I have nine piglets only one of them was born alive and she spent like three or four days in in labor and uh, had to have that same vet come out for her for that one and uh, even the and then the one that was born alive died about three days after that so that was just a nightmare and then shortly after that waddles was showing signs of pregnancy and so she had nine piglets and they were all healthy she she had them all within a four-hour period i believe that's the window that they usually have them in anyway and uh, so had a nice healthy batch of piglets it was fun to watch them. it was fun to watch them grow up and and um we sold a few of them <coughs> I got Yoda. Yoda was the the male that was the runt, and I got him castrated because he had some. Not only was he a runt, but he had some he had some uh, features that were not going to be good for um, passing on to next generations. Because these are registered, were you know, Idaho pasture pigs, and I was hoping to be able to sell Idaho pasture pigs in the red as a registered pig. And uh, so I did. I got I got Yoda castrated. I kept one of my uh, males, and uh, of the and I guess I'm going to use him for breeding. I guess, but I can't breed him to Waddles. But I guess I can breed him to Daisy. So mm, I don't know. It's been kind of a mess. I was really thinking that with the Idaho pasture pig because it is a really cool breed. I like this breed. I like. Uh, I like that I can get into the pen with them. I like I like their personalities. Of course, I this is the only pig I've ever dealt with. And there's been a lot of things I've really liked about it. But I was talking to the ag teacher nearby. And he goes, yeah, but none of the schools, that's not a category. When they show pigs and stuff, they the Idaho pasture pig does not have its own category right now. So there's there's not a market in this area necessarily for Idaho pasture pigs. Plus, I'm apparently not very good at marketing. So I think I've still got, I've got, I've got both sows and three girls and one, well, and then Yoda and the, and the one intact male. And I don't, I won't lie. I don't know what to do with them. So I'll have to see what to do with that. So like I said, some parts of that have been really cool because I did get some really cool piglets and, and that was really fun. But overall, that's been a, that's and it's been my fault it has been a failure and so that's kind of a bummer about that too uh one of the, one of the goals i had for the summer was to learn to drive the tractor and even to maintain it i hadn't even, haven't touched the tractor i've been so busy doing so, so many other things and so much of stuff has gone on that i have not and i'm still planning on doing that for this year hopefully but i did not uh, beautify and clean up the property. You know what? I have gotten a start on it. I have got, I did get a dumpster and I try to have it full every, every other week when they pick up and, and, uh, collect the garbage and it has not been full every time, but at least I'm making some progress. And my youngest son actually has come and has, he's going to start hauling off a bunch of appliances for me well he's already taken one load and so i'm so grateful for that there's a long way to go but i'm so grateful that we're going in the right direction so that's cool and and i would say honestly that that was a success um gardening <sighs> i started trying to garden um, I'm allergic to weeds. Every time uh, weeds get too tall, if they brush against me, it looks like I'm in kind of slashed and stuff. So then I'm having to be out there in the heat of the summer in long sleeves and I don't like long sleeves. And, and you know, I have 
regular seasonal allergies and stuff too. So I will be perfectly honest. I don't enjoy gardening, but I will do it. I'm going to put my nose to the grindstone and do it again this year. But honestly, Tom did most of the gardening and I was glad that he stepped up for that. Because honestly, most of the stuff that happens around here is what I have to do. And so if it doesn't get done, it's because I didn't do it because Tom, Tom has a job and he's just not going to do it. So I was glad whenever he stepped up and he actually even did some canning and stuff this year too. So that's pretty cool. Um, the next one of my goals was better care of the orchard. I will say that I did get the pears, pear peaches and a, um, what is it? A, a plum tree pruned this year. And I felt pretty good about that. I don't know what I'm doing, but I think I did an okay job on it. My problem with, with the, with this aspect though, with taking better care of the orchard, is I thought Tom was keeping an eye. We have a beautiful, big, huge pear tree, and it had a lot of pears on it. And I was keeping an eye on it occasionally, but then, like, I went to Florida to help help with my parents for a little while, and a few things happened after that. And when I came, whenever I went, next time I went out there and check on him, not only were there no pears in the tree, but there were, were none on the ground. So we missed that whole harvest and i was so upset about that <clears throat> same with the vineyard it was doing good the vineyard and i've told you guys this in the past when uh when we come because i don't have an irrigation system in place and if um if we don't get an occasional rain throughout the summer then we don't have a harvest of, of grapes well this last summer we had enough rain and had enough things happening that i actually was going to have a pretty good grape harvest and uh, that they ripened and over ripened while I was in Florida and we did not get a, we did not get a grape harvest so it but the vineyard itself over is actually looking better it's got a lot more work that needs to be done on it so yeah I don't know I'll, I'll, it, I'll I still want to beautify it and and stuff there's I have some ideas I want to do with it but yep missed the harvest didn't do so good so in general overall I took care of it better but I missed the harvest so I don't know how you would I guess that's still not a good passing grade. Um, one of the things I had wanted to do was broad-breasted turkeys. I was going to uh, raise a batch of broad-breasted turkeys see if I could get some sold, and I was going to put some in the freezer. <clears throat> I did a batch or two. I've done a couple of batches of broad-breasted turkeys, and we had ground them because whenever I was having when, uh, the significant food allergies, we found out over time it was probably from alpha-gal, which is a tick-borne disease, and there might be some other issues with it too, but I'm on some excellent medication that helps keep all that stuff under control but for four years i could not eat beef wheat pork or dairy and uh you know so i raised turkeys and they were they were good turkeys we had is good meat i've still got some ground uh, meat in the freezer <clears throat> so but I'm better now. I can eat anything I want to. Every once in a while, have a little bit of a, a, a reaction to something, but it's nothing like anaphylaxis. And I wasn't, and my face is not swelling up. My, uh, my skin's not erupting in sores and everything like that. So I have a regular diet now and I've still got turkey in the freezer. <clears throat> and again, marketing, I had put out there that I was wanting to, uh, you know, the, here's when I was going to put the turkeys out for sale. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I was only going to do it for $5 a pound. You know, I've seen, seen in several places where they sell them for $11 a pound. Well, I couldn't even get $5 a pound in this area. So I did not raise broad breasts of turkeys. I did get a, a breeding trio of turkeys and, uh, did them because I'm trying to be self-sufficient out here as much as possible. And. I wanted to be able to hatch turkeys and if I needed to, well, <clears throat> over this last cold spell in uh, December, well, no, in January this year, I've lost the tom and one of my hens. And because I don't eat turkey I, anymore, then I've got the one hen left. And so I've still got a freezer full of turkeys and a hen that I don't know what to do with. Because I now when I had decided that I wasn't going to eat turkeys anymore so much i tried to put them as a breeding trio out and i couldn't sell them either so yeah i'm batting a thousand here aren't they oh well i'm doing what I, i'm trying to learn and do as i go and this and uh, i so i don't know i got a long way to go i guess uh corners cross i've got 
uh, I did a batch, I believe at least one batch of Cornish cross for, for the season. Uh, they were way undersized. I, I think, I don't care what they told you last year. Some of the people were saying they were not being able to get uh, uh, eggs last fall, last winter. And it have, probably has something to do with the feed. And I'll be perfectly honest. I believe that is the case because um, I went for five months with no eggs at all last year and uh, was feeding them the same amount of feed. And I had even upped it a little bit and tried to do supplement with things and stuff. And I, I just wasn't getting any eggs last year. And, uh, and the same with the... There was a, a two two issues there. One of them is our, our processor, whom I love. I love this family dearly, and they do an excellent job. But she was so busy because two other processing plants closed, and so she was trying. She and her family, it's an Amish family up in Kansas. They they were inundated, and so I had to schedule a date. Well, when the eight weeks came up, I had way underweight chickens, so I've still got chickens in the refrigerator freezer. Some of them were only like two and three pounds, and they were pretty sad. So yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I'll probably do another batch this year uh, of the bigger one and, and get them up to size. But yeah, my even my broad breasted, oh not my broad breasted, but my Cornish cross, I didn't do too well. I did buy the breast, the American breast, and uh, was going to keep them as a uh, a breeding stock too. And the owl killed all but one hen. So I I don't know. That was kind of a bad deal, too. And I didn't even get to taste them. So, you know, I keep hearing how they're more of a darker meat type bird. And I don't have any idea. <clears throat> um, I was trying to look for non-GMO feed. I didn't do it. I, you know, I lost my supplier for what he was claiming was non-GMO feed. And then I got to listening to him talking. And I don't believe it was non-GMO. I think he was just going to, uh, I think he was just telling me it was. And so I, I it was, I I, well, I'm not buying from him anymore and I can't afford to buy. I spent a lot of money on feed as it is. So uh, I wanted to raise rabbits and I did get a rabbit. I ran into a really cool deal on that one. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, she said that I've got a rabbit and, and uh, I can't remember. I think I paid a really sweet deal for just for the rabbit and the cage and the setup for it. I think it was like $50 for the whole thing. I don't know. It was really good. So and I did end up getting rabbits, but I ended up getting kind of crippled with my foot and I knew I was going to have some surgery. So I did not get a, a girlfriend for Roger. And uh, so I got the rabbit, but I haven't raised rabbits necessarily. So, I mean, so eh, yeah, that's a 50% too. Okay. Trailer house. So we got off the farm and the animals. Let's go into the trailer house. It was what, one of my big thing. And I was really adamant about this last year is I want to finish the bathroom. Well, you know, <clears throat> we did not finish it, but, when it came down to um, time to get it done, some several men from our church came and knocked out a whole bunch of stuff just before I had surgery. And I do have a functional bathroom. I've got a beautiful vanity, you know, with a you know lavatory, and I've got I love the the my new shower because now I'm gone from a 31 inch wide shower to 48 inches. And I just love it. It's beautiful. It's, but I still have to do trim. I have to, um, there's several few other things I need to do with it, but it's functioning and I'm grateful. So it's, the bathroom is not finished, but it is, it, I have a bathroom that is literally, because I counted 10 steps away from my side of the bed. So I'm excited about that. It's not finished. So I guess you can't really call that a, a, a true success, but at the same time, uh, it's, I've, I've got a bathroom and I'm happy about that wood stove. It's still sitting in pieces out in the front yard. That's not doing, um, I had said I'd want to replace Kinsey's vanity in her bathroom. Haven't done that. She has said she's not interested in it right now. And I thought, okay, I can't even get my bathroom right now, but it's going to have to be replaced. But it, things are bad enough in her bathroom that I may have to replace her whole bathroom. I don't know. My closet, we haven't worked on it. I got a few things on the floor store, but I don't have, I have my bar up or anything like that. So nope, haven't got that done. So basically out of all the things I wanted to get accomplished in the trailer house last year, only one of them is mostly accomplished. I had one to lose 50 pounds. Well, I haven't lost 50 pounds. I haven't lost any weight. Well, that's not true. I think I've lost two pounds. <laughs> 
um, hip camp. I was going to do a property assessment and I wanted to get things set up for, for workshops. Uh, I did have somebody kind of assess it and, uh, I'm not ready to do it right now, but it did have some assessment and it was, it is an opportunity or an option for us to consider in the future. And so I'm, we're still considering it, put it that way. Uh, content creation. I really want to get a thousand subscribers. I'm halfway there, guys. I've got 521 subscribers on, on, uh, grandma's homestead, uh, for YouTube. Uh, I do some Facebook shorts occasionally, and I've been doing some Instagram and though <clears throat> I've been doing some scriptures and some quotes for Instagram and, and TikTok and stuff, but I'm not there on any of that. And I'm going to keep on at it. That's all I can do. <clears throat> I wanted to sell some merchandise. I have developed. So I love the mugs that I had had designed, but I didn't get those sold. I did, and I, and I was really pleased with the calendars. And I did do another calendar this year, but I gave them away for Christmas presents. I didn't sell anything. And affiliate programs. I didn't even do anything with affiliate programs this last year. And uh, but the good news is, as this uh, already this for this year, I've already uh, applied to redo for. I had was doing had applied for Amazon affiliate in the past and I didn't sell enough, but I think I've got a system in place where I can actually do some selling this year. And I'm going to try it again. So that was my 2023. I would say overall, <laughs> I was going to say I got a D minus, but I don't know. That might even be an F and that is a little discouraging, but you know what? Life is, that is what it is. And that's life. And I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep at it. And I'm going to set up my goals for this next year. <clears throat> yes, I know it's February and I haven't even set my goals for the year. I'm thinking about it. I'm always thinking about it. I'm trying to assess. I'm trying to be logical. I've been trying to be, you know, you balance. Do you know, do you say, I want this, 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 and this, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get it? Or you could say, I want this, this, and this. <sighs> And I'm still recovering from surgery and I wear out quickly and, you know, because you read and you listen to and all that other stuff about, you know, like, okay, with the, the 10Xing things, you just got to keep on working until you get it. But when you get to be my age, you don't have the 10X uh, energy. So I don't know. I'm not going to quit though. I, I'm tr learning to modify. I'm learning to, to assess. I'm learning to determine what I can and can't do, but I don't want to modify so much that I'm not going to get somewhere. I'm just going to, I'm going to spend the time. I'm going to think about it and determine what it is I could truly get done. And I'm going to keep on working. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. Um, I'm going to tell you, even if your 2023 didn't go as that you thought it would, would, keep at it guys live live until you die because this is it this is all we've got we're not going to get do-overs even if we did we wouldn't know about it but in this life anyway so live enjoy your life get on with it let's go god bless i'll see you next time